Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to episode 11. In this tutorial we're going to focus on some ammo and handgun mechanics, i.e. we can only fire our gun if we actually have the ammo. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well, stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So. The gun itself, if we go to handgun fake, as we know up to this point, we have the weapon ready to pick up, we have it and we can fire it, we have the mechanic set for that. Um, but what we need to do basically is allow ourselves to only fire the gun if we have enough ammo. And that means referencing different scripts. So let's go to our handgun fire script. So double click it and open it up in Visual Studio. And when it's loaded, we're basically, in a nutshell, going to reference our global ammo script that we wrote. Um, was it last time? So we're going to reference this to basically check if we are able to fire our handgun. So let's go back to our handgun fire. And what we could technically do is we could create another variable here, which constantly references uh, the global ammo script, but it's not necessary. So what we can do is we need to add an extra uh, if statement here. We could use an or statement if we wanted, but I feel nesting at this point is probably still worth it because I want to create an alternative. I.e. if we can't fire our weapon, I want to have like uh, an empty sound for our gun to play. So before we have is firing is equal to false, before that we'll need to do our check because if we can fire our gun it is this if statement that then needs to occur. So between uh, these two if statements so after fire one open curly bracket we need to have another if statement so if open bracket and it's going to be global ammo dot handgun ammo which is there in our list is less than one open curly bracket and now this is where we get to put in what we need to do if we have zero ammo so what we'll do is we'll bring in a sound into our audio effects folder so let's go to our audio effects and let's drag and drop this empty ammo sound straight into unity and you can get this on the website head over there downloads and assets wolfenstein 3d fps clone and tutorial 11 you know this by now so before we go any further, let's actually attach this to a game object within our FPS controller. Audio, effects, and ammo pickup. We'll hold control and press D to duplicate and change this to ammo empty. And then we just need to attach the empty ammo over here. And just make sure it's not ticked to play on awake and loop is not ticked either. So that is that sound effect ready. So obviously, because we're going to use a new object here, we need to declare that as a variable. So let's declare that as a variable up here. So public audio source, and let's call it empty sound, semicolon. So if global ammo .handgun ammo is less than one, we need to then play that. So empty sound dot play oh close bracket semicolon now it's also worth noting here that we could technically have another coroutine uh, it's entirely up to you because what could happen at this point is we would constantly play that sound because we could trigger that at any given point whereas here we can only trigger it if is firing is equal to false so theoretically, what you could do if you wanted to, I'm going to give you two different options here, um, is, well, you'll see right now what we're going to do. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to head back into Unity and just need to attach that variable to the handgun, which is right there. So empty sound, we need to drag and drop onto there. So let's press play. And let's go pick up the gun. So we should be able to fire, but you can also hear the empty sound behind it. You can hear that empty sound playing there. 
If you wanted to, you could actually have this if statement inside this is firing statement. It's entirely up to you. It's not really going to make too much of a difference. The reason why we have both the firing and the empty sound playing at the same time is because both of these statements are true. And we now need to make it so as only one of these can occur. What that means is that we need to have, after that, else, open curly bracket, and then place this if statement inside that else statement. So hold control, press X to cut that and place it inside that else statement. And let's get rid of those empty lines and save. So what's going to happen here is on void update, it's going to say, are we pressing fire? If we are, then we're checking if our handgun ammo is less than one. So basically, is it empty? If it is, then we press, then we play the uh, empty ammo sound. If it isn't, then we check if we're already firing. And if we're not, we fire. So let's check this out now. So let's go press play. And we should be able to go over to our gun, pick it up. Can't fire. So if we pick up ammo. We can then fire. So the next key thing to work on, if I stop firing that gun, is to actually change our ammo count. Now at the moment, the global ammo script controls what is displayed on our screen, as we can see. It's dictated by this here. So this always updates how much ammo we have. So that means that we could change how much ammo we have from this script. So based on that fact, what we can do is if we go down here to our firing handgun, we can place anywhere in here one line of code that will take off one shot. So let's go to, um, let's take off the ammo as soon as we fire it. So as soon as we have is firing, after that, we'll have global ammo dot handgun ammo minus equals one semicolon. Save that script and let's press play. And we should be able to see our ammo go down real time. So head over here, pick up our gun. Still can't fire. Pick up the ammo. We can fire. And we should be able to get down to zero, no more ammo. So, so far, so good. Now, I'm just going to test out one more thing. So this ammo that we have right here, which is floating in midair, so I'm going to bring that down to the ground rather than have it floating. So bring it down. There we go. I'm going to duplicate this handgun ammo and we're going to have another ammo clip, um, let's say, in over here in the room but what i'll quickly do is actually build this room up a little bit more because at the moment there's not a lot to this level is there and pretty soon we're going to need to actually build a level so we can play around in it uh, let's rotate this on x back to 90 180 there we go so i think at this point it really is best if you start designing a level uh, it will get to a point though where we kind of start developing randomized levels which is going to be a lot of fun i think okay so we have this room here now let's duplicate our ammo so we can take handgun ammo or control press d and let's just bring it over here for whatever purpose and let's check that out now so we should be able to collect a total of 20 ammo so we've got our gun ammo clip ammo clip there we go perfect so there is one glitch that i want to sort out before we end this tutorial and that involves our handgun over here so handgun fake has uh, a trigger around it which is right here the handgun pickup trigger and what we really need to do with this is we need to make it disappear because when we run the script when we pick up the handgun this item or object remains here now i don't generally like to destroy objects and what i mean by destroy objects is once we've dealt with them we can destroy it which means it disappears from the scene altogether because i like to kind of reuse objects because it certainly saves on memory it won't matter too much in a game of this caliber but in real intense games any type of saving you can use is worthwhile so let's go to our handgun pickup script and what we'll need to do 
to actually stop this uh, glitch from happening is turn off the box collider or move it somewhere out of view of the scene. I would like to go for the box collider turn off simply because I think that's the best course of action in this particular scenario. So as soon as we have played the handgun pickup sound, what we'll need to do is basically say get component and in spiky brackets box collider open close bracket dot enabled equals false semicolon and save. So all we're doing is we're telling whatever object that this is attached to to get that component of the box collider and disable it. So it effectively untick it right here. So let's check that out. Hopefully this should work first time. <laughs> uh, so yep, yeah, we head over there, pick up our handgun, and you can see right there, the box collider has been unticked. So no matter how many times we walk over here, we cannot pick up that gun again. And everything else works as intended. So, what I think we're going to do next tutorial is we're going to work on some more mechanics. Uh, we're going to use uh, something called Raycast. So we're going to set up a Raycast. I'll explain a little bit more what that is next tutorial, but it becomes vital, especially uh, when it comes to combat. Uh, I'd also like to start building up our world a little bit more because this room is a bit plain. So I'd like to bring in some stuff to make this look a little bit better. And if we have time, we may also work on font. Because at the moment, um, I'm sure I said it last tutorial, the font we're using is just plain and simple and our UI doesn't look particularly fancy. But it can look better all with font. So guys, until next tutorial, what I would recommend you do is just do what I've done here. Build up as much as you want to and just test out a couple of things. Test out your ammo, test out your gun. Test out different sounds and mechanics if you want to. You know, you customize this to however you want it to be. It's your game. I show you the mechanics, you build your game. So, guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.